in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 6, from verse 39 to 45. judging others. And Jesus told them this parable. One blind man cannot lead another one. If he does, both will fall into a ditch. No pupil is greater than his teacher. But every pupil, when he has completed his training, will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but pay no attention to the log in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, please, brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, yet cannot even see the log in your own eye. You hypocrites, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. A healthy tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a poor tree bear good fruit. Every tree is known by the fruit it bears. You do not pick figs from thorn bushes, or gather grapes from bramble bushes. A good person brings good out of the treasure of good things in his heart. A bad person brings bad out of his treasure of bad things. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This morning of 27th of February, we are here again to adore our Lord Jesus Christ. Adoration of Jesus is the greatest thing that God demands from us. We adore the Lord, we glorify Him giving him the glory, the praises, above every other kind. Today in our world, many people are following so many things, worshipping so many things, worshipping money, worshipping positions, worshipping this, worshipping that. But it is wisdom that speaks that we have to uphold God first. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will be added to you. So we adore the Lord, placing him as number one in our lives. There is nothing we can do for God for it to be so complete, if not to worship him, to adore him. Today, in today's gospel, we have heard what came out from Jesus' own mouth. 
Jesus never likes life of hypocrisy. It offends him so much. God wants us to be authentic. God wants us to be real. God wants us to be ourselves. God wants us to be humble. God wants us to examine our consciences, examine ourselves. God wants us to continue working continuously on our lives in order to be better. That is the reason why he, when he was preaching the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Jesus told the people, Be ye perfect, for the Lord your God is perfect. God demands perfection from us, but we cannot perfect ourselves. We cannot walk on the path of perfection if we are always focusing on criticizing others. We cannot make ourselves better if we neglect examination of conscience. That is the reason why I captioned my reflection today, the hypocrisy of correcting others while neglecting the heap of one's own errors. Most often you see in our world that this world is now filled up with people who criticize others. Although the criticism, the criticism is a blind one, not even constructive criticisms that will build growth. No, but this one is a kind of criticism that we demolish, a kind of criticism that we destroy. It's not constructive one, and such is always coming like gossip, like gossip. It is not good for us to spend our precious time discussing others. This can never add any value to us. If I bring out my precious time, the time I'm supposed to devote to adoring Jesus, the time I'm supposed to devote to meditation, reflection, examination of conscience, to know how I lived my life from morning till night. Before that day passes, I have to do a kind of examination of conscience to check how I lived the life for the day. It is meant for my own good, for me to rebuild the bridge that connects me to the divine, that connects me to God. Examination of conscience helps one to be able to pinpoint some actions, activities that do not give God glory, activities that never edified the person. You bring them, you assemble them, you ask God for mercy while projecting a time to confess the offenses, the errors, the mistakes of the day. You first of all have sorrow in your heart for not having measured up the expectation. God has some expectations from, from us, but most often we neglect this examination of conscience. We neglect it, but it is very important in our spiritual growth. For us to be perfect, for us to live a life of holiness, purity of mind and body, we need to embark on examination of conscience. It is very important. It is very, very important. One who does examination of conscience very well will have a humble heart. Because 
you will be seeing in your life some things that are not supposed to be, some words that you use that are not supposed to be used, some actions that you put out against others, which you may also be a victim of such actions. Instead of repenting and asking God for more grace to live better in the future, some people will become like that Pharisee, a hypocrite that was praying in the temple. He was in front of the, the, the church pews, the church pews. He was praying, God, you see, I am a good man. I go to church always. I fast seven days in the week. I keep the commandments. I'm not like this sinner that is at the back of the church. But the sinner, one who examines his or her life, his conscience was sorrowful over his own sins. He was asking God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. You see the difference? Examination of conscience is, have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Talk about your life, talk about yourself, judge yourself. Pass judgment upon yourself so that you live better. But in our world today, unfortunately, in the church, in religious communities, in dioceses, you see people who judge others harshly, who are embittered over other people's life, spirituality. Blind judgment here and there. Any community or religious community or society, civil society, that do not have a kind of quality time for reflection, examination of conscience, to, to think over the, the laws and the rules, the all these laws that people make, whether in the church or in the civil society. Some of them are erroneous. But it is during the time of examination of conscience that one will be inspired to come to the truth that, oh, this one is not good. Actually, this one doesn't work. Oh, I have to remove this one. But most often you see that the world in which we live they lack examination of conscience. That is the reason why some people will make mistakes and they continue standing on that mistake and then instead of correcting themselves, they will be judging others and condemning others. On the last day, Jesus our Lord may accuse us of all these things. He may call us hypocrites, just like what he called uh, this lifestyle. People who will always try to remove a dust in the, in the eyes of their own brother. Why neglecting a log of wood like this that is blocking their own eyes? The gospel said, first of all, remove this log of wood that is in your own eyes. Remove it so that you can see clearly. And they remove the dust in your, own, in your brother's eye. These are the things that will help one to live better not just for Christians. Humanity, we need to examine our consciences. Even during the time when you, we have languages of pandemic, this, this, lockdown, COVID, whatever, there are so many actions that some people may have taken and continue insisting on that, even though they have seen that this thing is not the way they are seeing it. But instead of doing a kind of reflection, examination of conscience, it's not meant for Christians alone. Examination of conscience. Human beings have conscience. Human beings have conscience. You see? So, 
since we have conscience, we need to examine our conscience. It helps to guide our actions in the future. What we do not, we fail to do better yesterday. When we are doing something today or tomorrow, then we amend it. If the way we talked yesterday wasn't referring unto God was destructing, very destructive to human, humanity or to our neighbors, then today we try to uh, reshape our utterances to give God glory and then to edify humanity. A blind person cannot lead a blind person. Never. That was the question Jesus started with in this gospel parable. Can a blind man lead a blind person? He said, no, I can give the answer. You can give the answer, response also. No. If they do it that way, then the two of them will end up inside a, a well or a ditch. So it, it requires that we should try our possible best to look into ourselves, judge ourselves, ask for God's grace to live better. Instead of spending all precious times we have discussing others, any society, any community, any gathering, we are people are always gossiping about the other. There is no progress there. There is no real Christian life, love of God there. It will all just be pretense. You talk and talk and talk about your brother. When you see the person, you just smile. You talk. But you are destroying, backbiting spirit can never be of God. We are called to reflect today. Because this attitude, many have used it to destroy various organizations, various families, various societies. Even the war that is going on in some places now, it is as a result of lack of examination of conscience. Let Mr. A examine his conscience. Let Mr. B examine his own conscience. Let Madam C examine her own conscience. We are supposed to examine our consciences so that it will enable us to do the right thing we don't examine our consciences, our actions will be very, very wrong. Our actions will, will be actions of a tyrant. Because a tyrant doesn't have the care to know whether what he's saying or what he's doing is uh, good for the common good. It is just for his own benefit. This is what I will do, and you will go about doing it, and others will be suffering it. There is fear in the world now. We talk about the, the, the virus now. We are talking about another, another thing that is making the world to be afraid. In the world, we find the revelations that in Christ we have peace. We refuse to embrace peace. That's why we are suffering. This country will be accusing this country. This country will be accusing the other one. No sense of examination of conscience. When there is justice, equity, fairness, how can, how can uh, people begin to fight and, and, and talk about war? Something must be there. Until that thing is brought out and solved and give justice and equity its way, then there may, there may be a, a, a serious difficulty. Let us examine our consciences. Many families, many couples have uh, broken or have experienced 
a horrible, horrible things that suppress them from being united because of gossip. Gossip. Some people will live in their own house, in their own family. They will not talk about their own family to put things in order there. They will be talking about another family. Some women will stay in their own family without cooking for the house, feeding the husband and the children. But the woman will be talking about another person's husband. I saw, I saw him uh, in a restaurant with another woman. They were eating and drinking and they were very happy. You see, you see we have serious problems. You devote your time to gossip. You neglect cooking for the family to feed your husband, to feed your children, to do things that you're supposed to do in the family. Many people have, many young people have lost their marital partners, life partner, because of gossip. There is never anything good coming from gossip, slander, backbiting spirits, a tough one. Or danger. May the power of the Eucharist enable us to be transformed radically, to be transformed radically, so that we welcome back examination of conscience. When I examine my own conscience, you examine your own conscience. I tell myself, oh, you are talking too much, and why talking too much? You are offending so many people. You have to moderate what you what you are saying. Maybe when you are with your colleagues, prudence, prudence. If I'm working with another person, and there is something I tell the person, the person gets annoyed. I try not to repeat that again. I try not to offend my brother. I try not to call my brother names that makes him irritate him. You see, these are practical things that will help us to live this life. Whether you are called to live in, to work in the family, to marry and bear children and live your life as a married person, whether you are called to live a celibate life in priesthood or whatever religious call you may have. Let us do this great assignment today. You will see that there will be a change in the society. There will be a change in the communities where we live. May the Spirit of God bless the words that we have heard to enable us to judge ourselves instead of spending too much time judging others blindly through Christ our Lord. Amen.
a short time for reflection and examination of conscience. Bibara bawa na kegwe pia regwe pia inaye ne yare yanya 
Blessed Sacrament, we implore you to grant us the grace to always examine ourselves. This will enable us to be better than we were yesterday. Grant us the grace also to avoid judging others blindly, to avoid passing always passing judgment on others. This attitude will not help us to get better. O oh Lord, you can do all things. Change our attitude today so that we begin to worship you in spirit and in truth, not like hypocrites. Amen.
is calling, come out of the land to die to save us all. O house of Hashem, Matthew is calling, is calling, come out of the land to die to James is, James is calling, come out of the land, to die to save us all. O house of Zebulon, Sadducee is calling, is calling, come out. to save us all. O house of Joseph, Simeon is calling, is calling, come out of the Lamb, who died to save us all. O house of Matthias is, Matthias is calling, come out of the land, who died to save us all, adoration, adoration.
Sacramento, mirabile passionis tue memoria le requesti. Vive que sumus. Vita nos coporis et sanguis tui sacra misteria venerari. Ut redentionis sucutum in nobis judita sensiamus. Qui vivis et regnas in secula seculo. Jesus. 
Thank you so much, dear friends. Our Lord is good all the time. The blessings of God has saturated our whole body. God loves you. Never you ever think that that you are not loved. God loves everybody and he takes care of everybody. Never you give up. Wherever you are, continue to move on onto the righteous side. You will conquer. You will emerge victorious. For those who are having ill health, the presence of Jesus grants you good health miraculously. Trust and obey. Have faith in the Eucharist. Whatever we are doing in this world, without Jesus, without God, it is in vain. Let us walk with Jesus. Let us contemplate about Jesus. Let us meditate and examine our conscience. It will help us to be better. It will heal our society. It will help the church. Peace be with you.